Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. We have here the SL55. This one just came in from out of town. It's about to receive a call over swap. It just came in from Philadelphia. Just got shipped in. Gotta move these cars around so I can get started. Let's check it out. I see the unique pinstripe. You don't see too many of those but on the SL, so that's unique. It has a dark gray interior. I think this is the same interior that I have in mind. It's not the black, but it's the, the dark gray. I think I had those same mats in mind. The carpeted AMG mats. What year is this? Uh, let's see, 2003, likely, okay. All right, so let's start this thing up and move it in the garage. Pull the key out. Pull that big old wallet out. Why is my wallet so big? Even has a zipper on it. <laughs> let's see here, okay. ESP not available. I wonder what's up with that. I think that's battery related. I don't know. Alright. I don't know what issues the car is having. Um, I know that he rose the uh, suspension up to avoid issues with the uh, trailering of it from Pennsylvania to Ohio. Okay, so the SL55 is now in the garage. And you know what's coming next, the coilover swap. But I'm gonna do a little walk around just to make sure that everything is what it is. As it is when it leaves, it is as it came. Make sure that I don't do anything new. All right, so here it is, it's safe in the garage. And you know what's coming next, the coilover swap, just so Neil Max. But before I do that, I typically like to do a little walk around See the condition of the car. Make sure that there's no new scratches that I introduce or any type of damage. Make sure it leaves just as it came, except a better suspension, more reliable suspension. I did notice something in the front here. This right here. Okay, a little damage right here. This piece can be replaced though. This is all one piece right here. It could be popped out of that bumper and be replaced. Yeah, it is a little dirty because it was transported all the way from Philly, Philadelphia. So I'll try to wash it before I send it back or at least get a lot of that surface dirt off of there. It's going to be dirty again because it's going to be transported back to the owner. This is going to be fun. The SL55 conversions is always a little bit difficult in comparison to the SL500 because in the uh, engine compartment you have 
a little bit less space because you have the supercharger. And so it's a little bit tighter getting that ABC pump out of there. And then the exhaust is bigger. The pipes are a little bigger on the SL55. So you have less clearance to get to that lower control arm in the rear and get that bolt out. You have to uh, drop the exhaust in the rear off of the rear hooks in order to clear uh, that bolt out. <clears throat> That's the way that I remove the rear struts is by lowering the inner part of the lower control arms, not the outer, not where the hub is, but the inner. Let me go ahead and pop that hood. M113K motor. I love it. I want this to be sitting outside. It does have a little rust right there for me. Look like some salt or something has got in there and done its thing. The hood, uh, the trunk, right? Okay. So I did get a signal on the instrument cluster regarding the battery. So that battery might not be uh, up to par. So I don't know if it's going to allow me to pop the. Okay, so I probably have to do it manually with the key. Or start the car and see if it um, opens that way. If it has enough juice to open it. Let me go grab the key. How do you do that? Well, see this little button right here? You slide this over this way and pull the key out. Okay. It comes out just like that. <clears throat> then you get up under here. You see right there where this key goes. It's been damaged right there, that pump. I don't know what the top works. You see, it's been some water damage in here. I gotta find out the history on this joint. You can see where water's probably getting inside the trunk. The seal. See, when these things sit outside too long, everything gets compromised because of the heat and the, the stuff that just builds up and no longer creates a good seal. And, that seal has to be cleaned, and I guess some people lube it also, but just keep it very pliable and soft and keep it clean. And so it prevents, um, helps to prevent, you know, the water from permeating into the trunk. Let's see. So these struts right here, these go out and no longer hose the, the trunk up. I'll reach out to him to see if he maybe wants me to change those out while I have his car. If I have some in stock. I don't know about this work. It doesn't look like it works. I don't know. 
let me focus on what I'm doing, but I did want to take a look and just see. I can tell some water definitely has been in here in this trunk. Got some rust right there. The bolts are rusty, so. Got a fairly new battery, I think. Maybe not. All right. So it's not gonna hold up, but I have to get access to the trunk in order to get to these struts. They're right up under there and right up under there. Gotta get access to this top of the struts. So that's how you open up the trunk if it's not opening on its own. Okay. Put that thing in there like this, turn it that way. Not this way, but this way. And then use the lever and boom. And don't forget to get the key out and put it back inside of here. Hmm. AMG. So low miles. I think it says 66 or something like that. Thousand. We're gonna get this thing back on the road though. Yeah, it evidently dries, but it's been sitting for a while. It's been sitting for a while. All right, let's see what we can do. All right, guys, so where are we at right now with this uh, 2003 or four? I forgot. This SL55, where are we at with it? I think 04. I think that's what I said. <laughs> All right, it's been a long day. So I have done the conversion for the power steering. I removed the ABC. I put the standard power steering pump in there. Can you see it? It's down there. I have become a pro at doing this officially. Yeah, I've become a pro with this, man. I've done it so many daggone times now, I already know what to expect. It's a process. And once you get that process down, you're good at it. I mean, I hated it the first time I did it. I hated it the second time I did it. Hated it the third time I did it. But by about the fourth time, I said, wait a minute now. I kind of know what to expect. There has to be some workarounds, you know, some ways to get around the difficult part. I know what common tools I use, but the process is the key. Once you get the process down, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Also, I remove all the ABC stuff. Those lines are still dangling there because I have to disconnect it on the other side. And there's a few brackets in between. But these will, um, you know what, not these, but these down here. These connect to the other side, to the other strut on the passenger side. These right here, I wind up cutting because these run up along the engine firewall and they come back down. And then they connect to the two lines that run back there and there's two lines, oh, I'm sorry. There's two lines that run to the rear and there's two lines that run back up here to where this pulsation dampener used to be. So I removed that, of course. Here goes the wire for it. I clean all that stuff up. So the wires that run to the back, I'm sorry, the lines that run to the back, those are uh, in process of being removed. The two lines that run across the firewall right here that comes out of here, I just cut those. I don't need them. I usually just cut them somewhere and I'll put the bracket back on it to hold them steady. This line right here, you don't need. This is your oh, you know, this high pressure uh, line that goes to the pulsation dampener. Uh, that I think is what goes directly from the output of the pump. Uh, that line is hard to see it, but it's that one that has that little green washer thing, Teflon little washer thing in between that right there. So, all right. So I don't need that line, that's gonna stay though. I don't remove that because I just don't feel like it. It just stays. It's not much fluid in there, it drips out pretty quick. So then in the rear, I remove the valve block back here as well. And these two lines right, these two lines right here, these two, get out the way. Get out the way. These two lines right here are the ones that run along the body of the car up to the front 
Everything up underneath that supports those I already have removed. I just have to drop those down. These two lines right here, I cut. These two lines right here run over to the other side. I don't need them. I'll cut them. Let's see. I found it. He had a little mouse nest back here. Yeah, it's disgusting. Full of mouse poop and piss. And the bad thing about that, once they get into your car, not only does it smell, but oftentimes the urine is toxic. Well, not toxic, but uh, acidic. And it can cause rust. So get that crap out of there, man. I see that the car has been sitting. There's a lot of stuff even up underneath. Inside the engine compartment. I saw there's a whole lot of berries and nuts and leaves. So something's been living in here. And also I saw that in the trunk, there was some, some water damage, some rust back there from uh, water getting inside this trunk. As beautiful as these cars are, the worst thing we can have them do is sit. We gotta draw these rascals, man. We gotta draw these bad boys. Especially if you're blessed to have an AMG. Oh man, drive the heck out of it. It's so worth it. It's such an experience, such a rush. There's people that would die for this car, man, I swear. These 5.5s five are so highly desirable, it's crazy. People love these cars. They love these cars. So, take care of your car, guys. They're so worth it. I appreciate it. And this uh, owner right here, he's taking care of it by getting rid of the ABC. And we're going to put this strut master, these coilovers in there. These coilovers right here. These coilovers will permanently eliminate any issues that he's had with his ABC. And we'll never have to put another dollar into it. That's what I do here. I get rid of problems permanently. All right, guys. It's me, Brandon Green, owner of Godel Auto Works. I'm doing a coilover swap right here on this 2004 SL55. Now, I want to make this quick video because I've been hearing from uh, a couple, uh, it's probably been like maybe two or three um, customers who have bought these Silver's Neomax coilovers, and they've had issues with a popping noise when they turn from the front. Um, this is not a problem with the coilovers. That will occur with any adjustable coilovers. The reason why that is happening is not the design of the coilovers, it's the installation and the setting, the adjustment of the coilovers. What's happening is this preload on the spring, this collar right here, that collar right there only needs to be as tight to prevent the spring from moving around, from rattling. There only needs to be limited tension on this spring. It should not be cranked down, or in this case, cranked up. If there's too much tension on the spring itself, then the bearing at the top will not enable the coilover to adjust when you steer. Instead, the spring itself will be... Hi, this is Brandon Green, owner of Gold Element Auto Works. I'm currently working on a 2004 SL55 right here. I'm doing a coilover swap. With Silver's Neo Max, this is with the default or the standard spring, no rear extender, no super low kit, standard spring rate. Now lately I've been having some, uh, I've heard maybe two or three stories of people who have installed these Silver's Neo Max coilovers onto the SL55 that they've had an issue with a popping noise when they turn. It's only in the front, not in the rear, only in the front. When they turn, they hear a loud pop or a loud crank. The problem with that is you don't have the adjustable coilovers adjusted properly. This preload collar right here is important. You don't want to crank it onto the spring too much because it causes the spring to bind. Yes, the spring will not turn freely when you're, when you're turning your steering wheel. A coilover is designed to move freely at the top. There's a bearing in there. That bearing allows the top to adjust when you steer so that it doesn't create excessive tension on the coilover or on the spring. It is designed to spin slightly left and right or clockwise and counterclockwise when you turn. So if there's too much spring on here, the spring itself will bind and it will pop. You hear a loud pop or a metallic uh, popping noise. And that is the spring uh, uh, freeing itself or unloading, I guess, onto this collar or across the top. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I secure, I'm doing this you what I'm talking about. When I hold this body right here, that's similar to this being cranked down right here and this being one, meaning this is secured, this is locked down, and this and this is now one. So I'm going to hold that and cause that same effect. Now, if I were holding this and the car is turning, it wants to do this. 
See, I'm holding the body. The body of the coilover is not turning. Okay? Just this top is. See, there's a spring, or there's a uh, bearing in there that needs to be able to move freely. Now, if I over crank this down, see right now it's a little loose because I have it loosened, but it should only be tight enough where the spring doesn't move or rattle around. It should be just a little bit of tension on here, not a lot. I usually seat the spring onto this uh, perch or the collar because there's a rubber, if I remember right, or it's plastic. There's, there's a, something that sits like a plastic washer, so to speak, that sits on top of this perch right here or this collar that the spring sits on. So once this makes contact and it stops rattling, okay, no more rattle, do one complete turn, okay, one complete turn, and then that's it, no more. That still allows this to move freely when you're steering. This has to move freely when you're steering. You put too much tension on this, then this is under strain or stress, and it's going to pop. It's going to pop. It's going to pop. You're going to hear that spring pop because it's being binded. All right? It's under too much tension, and it's not able to do what it's supposed to do. So do not to put too much preload onto the spring. Make sure it's just enough where the spring doesn't move around or rattle. It doesn't rattle. All right? It's secure, and that's all you need. Focus on adjusting the length and the dampening. Get those things right, and you won't have an issue with the binding or that popping metallic sound that you're hearing when you're turning. So if you already had it installed and you're having that issue, whoever installed it, have them go back and change that preload. Loosen that top collar. <clears throat> Let it move freely, and then add tension to it just enough where the spring doesn't move, and lock it in place, and that will solve that issue. If you leave it with too much preload too long, you have a rubber washer right here, a rubber uh, bushing up here. And you have another rubber bushing right here. You have a bearing inside of there. We all know what ball bearings are. If this thing has too much preload on it, and you're hearing that popping noise, fix it immediately. If not, you're gonna cause damage to this. And guess what? That's not under warranty because that's a flaw with the installation process. This right here, it's under warranty for eight years. They will protect their product. Silver's Neomax protects their product. But you need a professional who's familiar with coilovers to install this because if they mess it up, if they don't do their job properly, then they're not covered. Okay? You have to go over, you have to go after the, the installer for the replacement. Silver's Neomax will not cover an um, um, uh, 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 issue that the installer caused. They cover the product, okay? So make sure that you guys get this taken care of properly. When you have it installed, if you do it yourself or you pay somebody to do it, make sure it's done properly. Again, eight year warranty. They extended the warranty on these. These are great products. You can't lose with these. You'll love to ride. Forget Strut Master. <laughs> Forget BC Raisin. <laughs> the spring rate is wrong. Silver's got it right. And if you want even more performance out of these, Go with the Swift Springs. That's what I put on my Swift Springs on my SL55, and I love it. I love it. You'll love it too. For more tips on how to install these and how to get it set right, let me know. I'll hook you up. You know how I adjust these for the SL. I look for that hole. Well, this one's missing the hole. Well, the hole is up under this, uh, it's up under here. The tape, the hole is right up under there, but expose that hole. Pull the threads all the way out until they disappear in that hole. Measure one inch, reduce the overall length by one inch. You do that in the front and the back, and you'll have the perfect height. It's close to the OEM ABC lowest setting. All right, watch my other videos, I explain that. So one inch in the front, one inch in the back. They've made these things for a while now, and they've adjusted the total length of these. At first, they seemed to be too short where you had to overextend them. Then they were over, like they were too long. So now they have them at the right height. So just one inch now in the front, one inch in the rear. And that's perfect. Any more questions, hit me up. Go to Elma Auto Works. Go to www.goelmautoworks.com. You can give me a call. You can text me, area code 513-967-8079. You can email me at goelmautoworks at outlook.com. Got any questions, hit me up. All right. So let me get back to work.
silvers. It's the way to go, baby. Hey guys, a quick note regarding the trunk and getting access to the top of the rear struts. My very first video when I did a coilover swap, I removed all the trunk lining, all the interior panels in order to get to the top of the struts. I even removed this cover right here. All that I disassembled. You do not have to do any of that. To get access to the struts, you simply pull this carpet back. You loosen it from the back, work your way around, and you can get access to the struts right here. You get the top two bolts, only two bolts, two nuts. You can access to it just again by pulling back that panel. Same thing here. Start in the rear. Be careful on the driver's side because you have a lot of airlines back here. And if you're not careful, you will damage them. See, you just pull it back like that. You can get to the top of each strut. There's two nuts. All right. Watch out for these airlines. I know somebody else that had to coil over swap. And he got to pulling these panels back and he messed something up. He, he popped one of those lines. He damaged one of the lines. And they're not cheap and they're not easy to replace. So be careful. Those lines, they might control the pneumatic system, the, the door locking system. They might control the seats. Um, I have no idea what they control. You don't want to mess those up, okay? <sighs> Be careful doing that. But that's how you get access to those rear struts. All right, so the coilovers are installed, and this is what it looks like with one inch adjustment in the front and in the rear when you were uh, assembling or adjusting the coilovers before you install them. So you have a nice even gap pretty much. You see right here? This is a nice factory height. I think kind of similar to the ABC lowest setting. The front probably be lifted up just slightly, but that's when you decrease it by one inch. And you're adjusting the struts before you install them. One inch all the way around is about like that. Now some people might be cool with just that. I feel like the back is a little higher than it is in the front. I don't know. Um, I'll pull it out, I'll drive it first before I make the final adjustment. But that's how it looks. And it's even in the front and even in the rear. If you look at it like what I'm saying, the, the rear on both sides is even, and the front on both sides is even. So maybe if you wanna raise the front up a little bit, maybe raise it like a quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch. The back is fine, looks good. These are factory wheels, 17s or 18s. They look like 18s, let me see. Factory 18s, yeah, all right. Mercedes AMG uh, 18s. I think these wheels might have come on like the CLK. Haven't really seen them on the SL 500 or 55 in this case, but it's a nice look, I like that. It's a nice clean look, so. It seems like this car is getting put back together. Um, look like it's been through a little bit of uh, sitting, and uh, it's, it's now being um, put back on the road and in the suspension and repair so that we won't have that failure in the future. Uh, I'm not sure about the roof, if that's working. or I don't, I don't think it is. Matter of fact, I spoke to him. That water that got in the trunk messed up or immobilized that uh, pump, stopped it from working. So there's some more things that need to be done to it. This is, you can look at it like a rehab project. You know what I mean? This car has tons of potential. It's low miles. Uh, it has a whole lot of life to it. Uh, these are typically just uh, cosmetic uh, issues, and uh, in the case of the roof, it's a mechanical issue, but that can be resolved too, you know, electrical, mechanical, whatever. But this car really has a lot of potential. It is an AMG. I love it. I love it. So if you're fortunate enough to get your hands on an SL55, do it. Um, I wonder if he'll sell this one. I should ask him, see how much he'll want for it. But there are some things cosmetically, like I said, that it needs. It needs those, the seat probably uh, dyed or redone or whatever. Not, I mean, I think you can save that leather because it's not holes, it's just a lot of cracks. Um, it needs to be cleaned up, you know? It needs to go out through with a fine tooth comb and brought back to life. And removing the problematic ABC suspension is the beginning of it. It now has the standard power steering pump and now it has coilovers all the way around. And now I'm at the point where I just have to adjust it to make it just right. Right now I have the rear set at uh, 18 turns and the front at 24 turns. And that's usually where I keep them, something around, something like that. Nice balance of firm and comfort. I gotta get his height adjusted properly and then we'll see what we have, all right? 
Okay, so now I am driving the SL55 that I just did this coilover conversion on. I'm gonna go ahead and put her on the road, see how she feels. Right now I had a back set at um, 18 and the front is set at 24. Okay, max dampening settings at 28. All the way hard. It should never be all the way hard because then that isolates. The dampening becomes more firm than the, uh, the spring itself where the spring can't do what it's supposed to do. So you are doing that you are preventing the strut from uh, the coilover from absorbing bumps properly and responding to imperfections in the road by canceling out the spring capability. So you don't want to isolate the dampening from the spring. It's a happy, it has had a happy medium, a happy balance. And more firm in the front, softer in the rear. If the rear is too soft, it'll be bouncy. If the rear is too hard, it'll be a very uncomfortable ride. So we want to make sure that we have um, that set properly. Let me adjust these seats, man. I don't feel comfortable. Hold on. Let me push myself back a little bit. Okay. All right. Let's see. Tight, very smooth, very responsive. If I barely touch that steering wheel, the car moves very easily. Very, very responsive steering. Some people have asked me about alignment. Do you need alignment after you get the coilover job done? I said no, because the struts don't do anything different than the ABC does regarding alignment. If you need alignment beforehand, you need it afterwards. Um, get your alignment done first. Some uh, people. Some shops, when they see coilovers on a Mercedes, they get intimidated, not realizing that, that all you have to do is still go by the same specs and uh, adjust the, uh, the suspension accordingly. But when they see any kind of modification, sometimes they get a little nervous. All right, y'all, so for me, the settings that are best is 18 and 24. Um, for me, I like a nice, well-planted ride. It feels firm enough and soft enough, comfortable enough. This is not a Cadillac, this is not a Lincoln, this is a Mercedes, yes, but it's a, perform a performance vehicle. They didn't make the SL to be a Porsche 911, but they didn't make it to be a Miata either. It's a very powerful, even if you have a 500, it's a very powerful um, and uh, nice torquey car that handles very well and feels sporty. I think with the ABC, it isolates the road from the driver so much that it does feel like a luxury cruiser. But I think with coilovers now, you feel the car more and it feels more like a sports car. So with the settings of 18 in the rear, 24 in the front, it gives it a nice controlled handling, uh, a nice, uh, a, a, a nice uh, r ride that feels very uh, responsive and very, I'm so sick of these windshield wipers, man, so loud, they're throwing me off. Um, <laughs> it gives me a nice feel, a nice handling, a nice, uh, uh, a nice confidence in the ride itself. And it's not too bouncy at all, not bouncy, it's not bouncy at all, really. Um, the, the rear handles very well, it, it remains stable, and uh, you don't feel like you're going to uh, lose the car during uh, fast driving. If you're entering or exiting a highway at fast speeds, 
you're going around a bend, it doesn't feel like you're going to lose the car. It feels, it feels good. You turn these wipers off, bro. God. All right, so I can't turn the wipers off because then I can't see. <laughs> it's raining still. But the car, um, to me, it feels like it's settled very, very nicely. The customer, he doesn't want it to be too hot. doesn't want it to be too low. He wants it to be a nice um, average height. And he knows that the car will settle probably about eighth of an inch over time. Just because new springs do that, uh, they will settle a little bit. Just say maybe a eighth to a quarter of an inch. Um, so the way it's sitting right now is, is really nice. It's even all the way around. I did have to make some adjustments to the uh, front coilovers. The rear was fine. The front, um, I did... I think um, on one side more than the other, I had to uh, I had to increase the height by about half about half an inch, and on the passenger side, I had to go up just a little bit more than that. So it's a nice feel right now. It looks good. I'll take some video of it once I park it. But driving this thing really feels good. <coughs> Excuse me. This car does need some maintenance. It does need some love. Uh, but this is the, the start. <clears throat> Getting rid of the ABC, now you can focus on the other things. You can put your money towards some of the cosmetic issues and uh, get this, uh, get the pneumatic system working again, replace that pump in the trunk. And um, do all the, you know, save, save some money. Do some things now with the money that you're gonna save with the coilovers and uh, put it back into the car and, and get it get it roadworthy. Where Okay, so the gentleman from Philly came to pick up his car. Well, not to pick it up, but to drive it. He's actually getting his shit back home. But for the time being, he wanted to come by while he was in town doing, uh, taking care of some business. And uh, he wanted to check it out. It's very impressive. I like the way it sits. I like the way it handles. I like the way it drives. Very nice. Yeah, so he had it shipped in here from Philadelphia. From, uh, uh, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And uh, he actually was coming to Ohio anyways uh, to do uh, take care of some uh, some business, some affairs. He's not going to drive the car back. He's going to have his shit back. Uh, he'll be leaving out of here, I think, tomorrow. And then he's going to have them come pick it up. So he's test driving it right now. I explained to him all that was done to it, how to adjust the suspension, my recommendation, things to consider with the car as he restores the car and gets it back to where he wants it to be. Very nice guy, man. Very nice guy. And I appreciate him trusting me to do the coilover conversion for him. He said he couldn't find anybody, anybody in all of Pennsylvania to do that. He likes it. I can already tell. He said he was waiting for me a year and a half. His car was sitting, waiting for me to come by. How's it feel? Well, so what I've heard, it doesn't have the smoothness of the ABC ride when you're going over little bumps. Okay. But I know it's going to go over all the bumps without breaking. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the advantage. So on this street, of course, you have a couple of hard bumps. I, I went over a couple of them as, you know, yeah. to test it out, and I went over them pretty fast. Yeah, you will hear the boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. Now, it does that with any car. Like this one, Aromatic, it does it. It does it with anything I drive. Those are some pretty big dips. Yeah, that's okay. um, but... In general, yes, like regular imperfections in the road, you do feel the road more. ABC kind of, kind of cut like uh, hid road conditions. Yeah, it'll 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 push the shot the wheel down to keep yeah. the things from bouncing. That, that's okay. Yeah. So. No, it felt good. Yeah. It felt, good. I, I, it, uh, it, uh, it felt reliable, and I'm I'm pretty happy. Good. Because so have to pay in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take care. Of it. All right. So another successful coilover job. We see how it's sitting right here. We see the height on the suspension. All the way around, this is the condition of the vehicle after the coilover job. My client came through. He was satisfied with how it turned out. He was satisfied with how it handles, how it feels. He said, in his opinion, it's a little stiffer. You can always dial it back. 
Like I said, the dampening settings in the front are at 24 and the rear is at 18. You can click it down if you want it a little bit softer. If you go down too soft, uh, the rear becomes comfortable but bouncy when you hit big dips in the road. So you wanna make sure that that rear is stiff, but don't over stiffen it because you can lose traction. So uh, it's a fine line. You don't want it too firm and you don't want it too soft. Again, my client had the car shipped all the way from Philadelphia, from Philly, um, Pennsylvania. And he had to actually come into Ohio for some business. And while he was here, he stopped by and checked out the coilover conversion once it was complete. And he wanted to drive it, make sure he was happy. And then he's gone tomorrow, well, from today, he's gone tomorrow and the car will be shipped back uh, to his home within a few days. Another successful coilover job. Many more to come. If you have any questions, reach out to me. Go to Element Auto Works, all right? Brandon Green, I'm the owner. If you call us, the phone number, area code 513-967-8079, I will answer. Again, my name is Brandon Green, the owner of Go to Element Auto Works. You can go to my website, www.gotoelementautoworks.com. You can contact me at gotoelementautoworks.outlook.com. You can go to my Instagram at widebodycl55. You can go to my Facebook under my name, Brandon Green, Brandon P. Green. Or you can go also under Gold Element Auto Works on Facebook. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to me. I'll do my best to answer them. All right, guys. So this is the finale. I have here a customer's SL55 2003. The one that I have right here is my personal SL55 2003. They are pretty much identical vehicles regarding the years, the models, the interiors, the exteriors, the colors. Um, I would say though, I, the blocks are a little different. Um, that's an 040. I gotta check the number on this one. I, this, this one has a little bit of that sparkle to it. Um, that deep sparkle. Uh, I didn't see that with this one. I see like just that deep black. Let me see real quick. Hold on. Make sure I'm not tripping. All right, so you see the C040. Let me see what mine is. But you see the interior, you see the colors. You see the interior, right, the gray. The Alcantara roof. Now let me see this one, hold on. Okay, so 197, all right? So this one has that uh, Mercedes AMG. It's like a, not anthracite, but it's like that, uh, what is it? It's like a metallic black or something. Uh, but those are the difference in colors. But it is black. The other one is black. But this one is a different color code black. But they both are AMG. They both are SL55 with the compressor uh, V8. So this right here is the customer's car. Greg Viola. Out of Philadelphia. I finished his coilover conversion probably about a week ago, actually. Uh, it was having a little issue with the transport company. Uh, the company said that they were coming to pick it up and they never showed. Um, they said they wanted more money. So of course, uh, that job was not completed. And so uh, he had to reschedule, rearrange for a different transport company to come pick it up. Sometimes that happens. Whenever you're looking for a car to be transported, picked up, shipped out, uh, delivered, you're gonna to go to something like Shipley.com or something like that. And you're gonna say where your destination is, what you have. And they're going to send you offers. They're going to send you a million offers. They're going to text you, call you, email you. And do not take the cheapest one. But don't take the most expensive one either. I try to find, I try to stay somewhere in the middle. Okay. So to go from here to Philly, it's going to cost about, I don't know, like $600, something like that. Um, I've, I had a car shipped in from California. It was 11, like 1150, 1175, something like that. Uh, you're going to get bids, like super low bids, maybe two three hundred dollars those are bs don't don't do it don't do it because either they won't show up or when they show up they're going to add more money to it and either you accept it and pay them more or they leave they won't take your your car with you with them um they'll just kind of last minute try to play you you know so let's not do that you know be careful when you're shipping a car in or out uh, make sure that you get a fair deal i always read the reviews on the uh, company so i see what the offers are uh, the, the numbers that I like, I'll do a review on. And if the reviews are shoddy or negative, of course, I won't take that company or that deal. 
So uh, transport is pretty cool though. You know, it does give you access to more vehicles. And in my case, people are transporting their cars to me to Cincinnati, Ohio for me to do the coilover jobs. Why? Well, because I know what I'm doing, plain and simple. Uh, a lot of people who offer that um, to do the coilover conversion have never experienced it on the SL. The advantage of me is that I do them over and over again. Both of these have been converted. Both of these have Silver's Neomax adjustable coilover suspensions. The ABC was removed and uh, converted over to adjustable uh, coilovers. Uh, Silver's Neomax is the best way to go. Uh, regarding the SL, uh, that's the 2002 through 2011, uh, the R230 models. This is the best uh, coilover suspension for it. Uh, regarding adjustability, price-wise, effectiveness. Now, I think VVK or something like that, they do offer VVX, VVK, something. Uh, they do offer one with a sway bar kit, but it's gonna be twice as much, if not three times as much as this kit. Now, for those who want sway bars, cool. You do have options with this one. There are ways to put sway bars with the Silver's Neo Max without having to pay the, the VVX or VVK prices. Uh, but make sure you look into that first. Do what's best for you. I'm not telling you which way to go. I never do sway bars. I don't need them. These cars handle fantastic. They're very low, very heavy. Uh, they handle very well. This car would have to be airlifted, <laughs> lifted off the ground, off-road maneuvers. Uh, half of the car would have to come, uh, have to, uh, the wheels would have to uh, not make contact with the road in order for it to become unstable and lose control. So we're talking about going airborne or going off-road. Um, of course, it will handle better with sway bars if you're doing crazy driving. If you're putting it on the racetrack, yeah, definitely do sway bars. If you're driving it every day on the road, you're good. I put Swift Swift Springs on these Silver's Neo Max. That's Swift. That's an option when you go to my website. When you go to the Silver's Neo Max and you look at uh, the options that they have, you can do Swift Springs. Uh, those springs are for, for performance, uh, performance, and uh, uh, a reliable, more reliable, more predictable handling characteristic with the Swift. Now those are, if you're racing or doing anything uh, that requires, uh, I think uh, a little bit added, you know, stability or performance, I guess, to uh, the nature of your driving experience. I so guess. the Swift Springs do offer a little bit more performance when it comes to uh, a consistent handling characteristic throughout the driving experience if you're driving fast. If you're driving it daily, the Swift Springs are not necessary. Uh, in my case, these are very powerful cars, the SL55. I drive mine pretty fast, and so I want the best handling with the Silver's Neo Max, and so that's why I did Silver, uh, the, the Swift Spring uh, with the Silver's Neo Max. So that's just a personal choice for me. I also wanted to see the difference between the two. If you're just daily driving your car, if you're not doing anything, you know, crazy with your car just go with the standard default spring it's perfect it's a nice setting a nice option nice adaptability uh 28 dampening settings uh on this one i have it set up right now with uh 24 in the front uh towards firm and 18 in the rear uh, i told the owner if he wants to soften it up you should have to go any less than 16 in the back i would keep the front pretty firm uh, because of just handling and things of that nature i always have the front more firm than the rear uh with this one i have it something similar it might be, I think I had it at 24 and 18. I think I dialed it back to 17. It really just depends on what you like. And I change mine kind of depending on how I feel that day sometimes. Uh, but one click at a time, don't do anything radical. Make sure you're consistent with your, uh, with, your, um, uh, with your adjusting, making sure that each side, left and right are even. Um, when you do it, remember your clicks. Write them down if you have to. Uh, keep track because a subtle change can make a big difference. But yeah, these are very nice cars, man. If you haven't driven an SL55, you should you should try to get one. At least try to drive one. Uh, go to a dealership, test drive it. See the difference. SL500s are great, fantastic cars. And I'm sure the SL350 is a great car. It's the V6. Uh, it's lighter. Um, it does have a coilover suspension. It doesn't have ABC. Um, and it's reliable. Everybody doesn't want to drive these cars 100 miles per hour. But for those who do, and those who want the most performance out of these cars, go with an SL55. If you had the money, go with an SL65. But I preferably, I preferably, uh, I prefer, or preferably, do not want a V12. Uh, they do offer an SL600 with a lot of horsepower and a lot of torque. I think it has more torque than SL55 stock, right? But the SL55 could easily be upgraded torque-wise and horsepower-wise. Uh, SL600, it's a beast but you have more engine and more problems. Same thing with SL65, now that's an incredible car. 
uh, rare, costs twice as much as uh, 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 twice as much as these, if not three times. I'm gonna just say twice as much as these, and uh, you're gonna have a different kind of power, more power than these, but a lot more money spent. And you still have to deal with the ABC issue. So whatever, not doing that. Also with the V12s, remember you can't change out that ABC pump to a standard power steering pump like you can these. All right, just something to keep in mind. With the big V12, you have to keep the ABC pump. Even if you do a coilover conversion, you have to keep the ABC pump. If somebody has come up with another way to install a standard power steering pump to the V12s, let me know. Let's take a look at this motor real quick. Let's take a look at this one. All right, guys, so here we go. Same motors. I think this one has 68,000 miles on it, 66, something like that. And this one has 78 or 79,000 miles on it. These motors speak for themselves. If you don't know, you better know. You better find out. These compressor motors are incredible, man. Incredible. Worth good money, good power. You can't beat this power for the price. You cannot. Find me another car as powerful as these and, 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 and it has the capability and reliability of these compressor motors for the same price. You can buy one of these SL55s five anywhere between. Shoot, the silver one I had, I paid 11.5 for it. It had 130,000 miles. <laughs> but you can't tell by driving it. And these AMG motors, man, they go 300,000 miles, no problem. These, these motors are incredible, incredible, incredible. And they can take a beating. These are incredible cars, man. Show me another car, another V8 that's as powerful as these and has the potential of these for under $15,000. Find me one. Stock. These cars are 493 horsepower. Stock. A whole bunch of torque stock find me another one find me another one i see these sl 55s going anywhere between like i said i paid 11.5 for mine which was the steel so go private owner you go dealership you're gonna get raped it is what it is dealership you're gonna get taken advantage of private owner um you can get one anywhere between average price between 13 to eighteen thousand dollars. you might have to pay a little bit more if it has low miles maybe in the twenty thousand dollar range uh, but they're out there you just gotta look you gotta look hard for them you gotta look hard for them but they're out there best time to buy one of these cars is in the winter time that's when i saw the cheapest sl 55s that's when i bought my silver one was in the winter time so they're out there guys they're out there I hear that exhaust that's straight pipe i just bought some boiler exhaust though that i'm about to put in there let me show you real quick hold on oh they gonna let me do it hey hold on exhaust on here these boiler mufflers right now i have a straight pipe i had the first catalytic converters no resonators okay so the second set of catalytic converters are gone no resonators right now no mufflers no amg mufflers are gone all right but it's a little bit too loud for me so i'm gonna go with the boiler exhaust all right i'm gonna close this up but yeah this is how you adjust those right there Deputy settings in the front. There goes the uh, standard power stairs pump down there.
here goes the transport company. Whoa, that's a big truck. All right, so what I'll do is I'll probably drive this car down here. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, hold on. All right. All right, let me drive this down here. Cause he's confused. He's not gonna know that he has to pull all the way up here. So I'm gonna drive down to him and make it easier for him. Cause that's just a big circle where he just went down. Just a big circle. All right. Okay. And I just walk back to the crib. for you, man. Load it back here? Like right here? Yeah, I need to stop the food. Alright. Okay. Huh? Okay. Ooh, no hit me. No hit me. No hit me. Woo! Golly. Woo! Alright. So we'll do it like that. Make it easy for him. All right. So come down here and just load it right here. Good to go. All right. Good. <laughs> Watch that door. How close do you want it? Do you want it like? Okay. Okay, all right. Okay, you good. All right, keep coming. You want like one foot? Okay. Okay. 
You right now you got like this. So I need Oh okay, that tight? Okay. Alright, I got you. Alright. All right, so I'm walking away now from the transport company. All right, they have the SL55. Now the gentleman who did the transport, who just picked it up, uh, who's about to take it to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he just asked me for a tip. He said, did I do a good job? I said, yeah, you did fine, you did great, whatever. Then he just asked me for a tip. He spoke it to his device in Russian and then said, if I did a good job, he showed me the translation on his phone and said, if I did a good job, can you please give me a tip? Tip? Uh, no, because this car was supposed to be picked up almost a week ago. And I got stood up already, waiting up to three in the morning for this car to get picked up a few days ago. So my tip is, have better communications. And I'm not dissing his, his language or his ethnicity or his dialect of whatever you call it, his race, his language, um, his mother tongue. What I'm talking about is when it comes to, as a business, communicating with the customer. If you're providing a service, make sure that you do that service efficiently, effectively and efficiently. And if there's any hiccups, which happens with business, with, which happens with scheduling, especially transport uh, services, make sure that you communicate that. Communicate that with the customer, the person who scheduled the pickup, the person who's waiting for the pickup, make sure you talk to them, okay? Now, this guy personally, you have no problems with him. He did great. But as a company, they got to do better. And, bruh, take a shower. He needed some deodorant and a bath. Okay, anyways, you guys take care. Um, I'm glad everything worked out. The car is gone. Dude did have a bad stench to him, though, for real. He was a little funky. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later, man. Let me get back to my life. Go to my auto works. I'm out.